Creating an animation with Squash and Stretch is super simple. Just pick a behavior from the library, select a layer and hit apply. Done. There's one key concept that's important to understand, the timing parameter. Let's apply a behavior to this layer with the timing set to start of behavior and to this other layer with it set to end of behavior. And now let's take a look at the keyframes. With start of behavior, the animation begins at the current time. With end of behavior, it ends at the current time. But that's not the only difference. Notice how start of behavior animations begin from the current position, while end of behavior animations finish at the current position. So here's the rule of thumb. Use start of behavior when you want your animation to start at a specific point, and use end of behavior when an animation should end at a specific point. In that case, make sure your current time indicator is placed where the animation should finish. Let's take an animate in behavior as an example. These behaviors always begin outside of the comp, so it doesn't make sense to define where they should start, only where they should end. That's why they only offer the end of behavior timing option. So when applying an animate in, first position the layer where the animation should finish, and second set the time indicator to when it should finish. To figure out how long an animation is, just click this handy work area button. It automatically sets the work area to the behavior's duration. Now we know when the animation starts and can place it precisely. And that's all you need to know to get started. Of course, there's a lot more to explore, like applying multiple behaviors, adjusting them with these controls here, or browsing all the available behaviors using the gallery button. Squash and Stretch is a powerful tool for animating text. Let's select our title text layer and try out the jump one behavior. When we apply it, Squash and Stretch asks whether to animate the whole text as a single object or split it into lines, words or characters. Let's first animate the entire text as one object. For text layers and also for shape layers, Squash and Stretch needs to pre-compose the layer. That's because the Bezier warp effect doesn't work reliably on raw text layers. But don't worry, Squash and Stretch handles this automatically for you. Here's what the result looks like. Now let's undo and apply the same behavior again, but this time to each character individually. Squash and Stretch splits the text, pre-composes each character and animates them one by one. The animation looks quite different. And notice the characters don't jump as high. That's because Squash and Stretch considers each layer's size when generating the animation. Smaller layers result in smaller movements. If you want them to jump higher, simply boost the oomph parameter. We'll look at that in more detail later. So should you animate the entire text or split into characters? It depends on the behavior and the look you're going for. When in doubt, try both and see which one works best. When animating multiple layers or splitting text into words or characters, you can add more variety by selecting several behaviors at once. Let's choose all three jump behaviors. The preview now shows all of them, each with slight variation. When applied, Squash and Stretch randomly assigns one behavior to each letter, resulting in a much more natural and less uniform look. You can go even further. Let's pick the entire bounces and move in categories from the animate in section. Now each letter enters with its own unique bounce or movement. The result? A dynamic, organic animation. You can fine tune behaviors easily with these controls. Use these buttons to flip or rotate the animation. The squash and stretch slider adjusts how much the layer deforms. Set it to zero and you'll see the movement remains, but without any distortion. The oomph slider controls how far and how fast it moves. Lower values make the animation feel softer and slower. Higher values make it more energetic. If you've selected multiple behaviors, this dropdown lets you switch between them to customize each one individually, or you can tweak them all at once. Of course, another great way to personalize animations is by editing the keyframes after applying the behavior. We'll cover that a bit later. Many Squash and Stretch behaviors include built-in sound designs. Just select the behavior, then select the sound variant here in the dropdown and apply it as usual.
Each sound design comes with multiple layers, giving you full control over volume and timing. If you use sound often, open the preferences to save some time. You can set Squash and Stretch to automatically pick the first or a random sound variant when selecting a behavior. You can also choose to shy or pre-compose the sound layers to keep your comp tidy. Or copy audio files to your project folder for better organization. And yes, you can set which folder they go to in your project panel. Need the raw audio? No problem! You can access and use the sound files like a regular stock sound effects library. Even the free version comes with nearly 100 sound effects. A great thing about Squash and Stretch is that you can easily modify the animation it creates. Let's take the jump one behavior and apply it to this box. To make it jump higher, one option is to increase the oomph parameter and reapply. But another way is to adjust the keyframes manually. Here in the timeline, you'll see two keyframes at the top of the jump. Just select both of them, make sure your time indicator is placed exactly on one and move them upward. Squash and Stretch creates deformation using the Bezier Warp effect. These are real editable keyframes too, so if you want to fine-tune the squash or stretch, you absolutely can. We already applied the bounce steps behaviors of Squash and Stretch Pro to this title text. Now let's select the first letter and select the sack raise behavior as a second animation for that letter. If we apply it with the default settings, the letter jumps away from its place in the word, which isn't what we want. So let's undo and apply it again, but this time set the timing to end of behavior, since we want it to land back in position. First, use the work area button to check the behavior's duration, then move the time indicator to the desired end point and apply the behavior. Now the animation ends exactly where it should, and even better, the previous bouncing animation shifts accordingly. Squash and Stretch automatically adjusts the previous animation when you apply a new one. Smooth sequencing made easy. This automatic adjustment applies not only to animations that came before, but also to those that follow the newly applied behavior. If you ever want to prevent this adjustment, simply shift-click the Apply button. Want to create a transition between two layers? It's easy! First make sure the first layer ends exactly when the second one begins. Place your time indicator right at that point. Next, pick a transition behavior. The free version includes the shake transition, which is one of five transition behaviors included in the pro version for even more creative options. Now select both layers, set the timing to transition and apply. For text, it's usually best to animate as a single object, so in this case we skip the character splitting. And that's it! You've created a seamless transition in one click. To split a text layer, select it, click this icon and choose how to split, by character, word or line. There are some advanced options too, but for this example we choose character and apply. Now each letter is on its own layer. This text exploder tool is part of the pro version of Squash and Stretch, but it's also available as a separate product. It includes advanced features like isolating individual words or splitting text based on regular expressions patterns. To learn more about these capabilities, be sure to watch the tutorials on the standalone version of Text Explorer. That said, if you just want to apply some behaviors to all characters, there is no need to split beforehand. Squash and Stretch will ask if it should do it for you, even in the free version. Let's apply the drop behavior to a text layer and let Squash and Stretch split it into individual letters. Now, to give the animation more rhythm, we use the Layer Stagger tool. This Layer Stagger tool looks at the in points of all selected layers and staggers them between the earliest and latest in point. So, to create a range for staggering, we move one layer, anyone, to the time where we want the staggering to end. Then select all the layers, click the Stagger Layers icon and apply the stagger. Instead of staggering in ascending order, you can also choose to stagger in random order. And 
for even more flexibility, you can combine ascending or descending order with some randomness to add a more organic feel to your animation. With just a click, your animation gains a better sense of timing and flow. Bonus tip! If you shift click the stagger layers icon, it will skip the dialog and immediately run the stagger layers function using the settings you last used. Perfect for quick repetitions. Normally, when you pre-compose a layer, the new comp has the same size as the main comp. But with Squash and Stretch's pre-compose and crop to content size function, the pre-comp matches the size of the content. A challenging special case is when the actual content of a layer is smaller than its bounding box, like in this Illustrator file. The visible artwork is small, but the layer's bounding box is much larger. Pre-composing it would normally carry over that oversized bounding box. To fix it, just draw a mask around the actual content. Then use Pre-Compose and Crop to Content Size. The created pre-comp has exactly the same size as the mask. This is super important. Squash and Stretch animates based on the layer's dimensions. If the bounding box is off, the movement will look strange. As you can see, with the incorrect bounding box, the logo moves unnaturally. With the correct bounding box, the animation behaves just right. Need to move multiple animated layers? Don't mess with their keyframes, just parent them to a null. Select the layers, click the Parent Null icon and Squash and Stretch creates a new null and parents all selected layers to it. Now you can reposition the whole group easily without affecting any of the individual animations. It's a safe and flexible way to make layout adjustments. In Preferences you can customize how these nulls are named. And you can even tell Squash and Stretch to auto-create a parent null for each layer when applying behaviors. It's all about keeping control the smart way. Animate faster, customize freely. Try Squash and Stretch free or pro today at ascripts.com.